Welcome to the Emerald Coast of Australia, and as per usual, a huge thanks to Expansive Worlds for this opportunity to come out here to the new map a little bit early. It is June 16th, the release date is June 20th, this next Tuesday just a couple of days away. The official release for this map will be out on all platforms, but this is a little bit of a different experience for me. If you saw the Untamed Species video over on the Expansive Worlds channel, you know that I obviously got the opportunity to play this map just a little bit in order to make that video. So we're up here in the Australian rainforest area, but to get the full and best experience, I think we'll fast travel down to the starting outpost and go from there. So we'll revisit the Australian rainforest a little bit later, but I wanted to go ahead and look at the new outfit for the Australia map the first time in a long time that we get new clothing, the Australian bushwear outfit, which we'll be able to see a little bit better in this screen. I really like it, similar to the outfit from Verhunga, but I think fitting for Australia a little bit better. And given the fact that we're heading into the Outback, I think it's only appropriate that we head out in the proper attire. And naturally, our first animal of the hunt is one that we've had in the game before, a feral goat, though that fits perfectly into the class for the new 22250. And I've actually been excited to try this out. I've obviously gone ahead and customized it already, but it is only 7,000 in-game cash to purchase, so not a bad price. And let's see how it does on a goat. It's a tent up there at about 150. If we stay zero for that, and if it stays there for just a second, I feel like we should have been right through around the area of the heart. It's starting to go down, so goats are an interesting class three animal. They're surprisingly tough for a class three. That didn't do too bad. It'll be really interesting someday down the road to do a comparison 22 250, 223, and 243. But for now, given the fact that this is a class two to four weapon, that didn't do too bad. Now I resisted anything to do with the Eastern Grey Kangaroo. This is the first track I've seen for them. Really interesting, it's just like one pair of footprints. If there's a male track in here, we'll maybe try to follow this group of them. There is, and I think a good one if I understand kangaroo weight estimates correctly. So. Let's come back to that, our goat shouldn't be too far. In fact, he's just barely beyond the reach of the hunter mate screen. Got another one out there, but not a very impressive one. So let's take a quick look at the new feral goat textures. I do think they look a whole lot better. There was always something with their eyes that just bugged me. I think that is significantly better. The fur looks way better. And I think the coloration of this, this was the Blonde fur type just looks much, much better. I don't know if the horns got any changes, but the 22250, there we see the new harvest screen as well. At 173 meters, we tracked him for 593. I think that does sound about right. That's a fairly long tracking distance, but again, it's not like a super powerful weapon for a class three animal. So not too bad. I wouldn't say it would be my choice for something like a feral goat or axis deer, black buck, any of those class three animals, but if you're carrying it, It'll get the job done. And right there is our first kangaroo. She is alarmed, a level four female. Now, I don't know if she's in that group of them. Oh, there's more right out there. Those are probably the ones we're tracking. I think that's the estimate we had. So maybe actually they get even bigger than that. He is a level six. There's actually two level sixes with that estimate. So let's scoot in there. If we can get one to go aggressive, I'd like that, but maybe for our first one, we just try to take it out normally. There is actually a level seven as well. Look at these animations. Like he is just <laughs> straight up relaxing out there in his rest zone. They are our class four animals, so we could use the 22250, but let's go with the seven mil here and just see how that does. Cause I think as we get closer, our view might be a little bit obstructed. So with him, kind of sitting still. That was an insta-kill. Are any of these by chance going to go aggressive? They know We know they will do it. But it looks like they're out of here. There was another seven. There's a lot of like good sized kangaroos in there. And there's like a whole group of them going that way. How are we supposed to <laughs> keep track of what's going on here? There was a five in there. A couple more sevens. I didn't see anything bigger than that. That is absurd. There's so many. Oh, are these aggressive? Oh, they are. <laughs> There's a good number of them. Okay, 
first thing I want to do is 22250 on one of them. Just to see how it does. Interesting, he just turned and fled. I'm going to let this one... <laughs> that is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that is so cool. Not a lot of damage. So I guess... Look at these animations, they're so good. I guess it's not a huge, like, concern that one's actually going to kill you. I mean, if you've fallen off a, a steep cliff or something, but they're not very um, damaging. And then they're just going to go ahead and flee, which is probably what you'd expect. I don't think they'd hang around for too long. Curious if it had anything to do with the gun. It shouldn't have because we shot the, whatever it was, level 6 that came in here first. And that did a heck of a job on the kangaroo, unless it went to fleeing. Now, they don't seem to flee incredibly fast. We saw all those ones kind of just hopping along the outback out here. And they're already just chilling out there, but let's see. Nice little gray-brown for that guy. We still gotta go and get our level 7 as well. That, I guess that was the one that we were tracking. So the tracking distance doesn't help us as far as how far he ran after the shot, but double lung. To be fair, only at 15 meters, but 22,250 on a kangaroo? Not too bad, and look at them. Really, really nice models. I wish, we'll, we'll have to uh, tax one and take it back to the trophy lodge, because even at this, I don't think we can fully appreciate the amount of detail. Like the faces are just so, so good. You can see the musculature through the legs and stuff. They are really neat. I don't know what that was. Evidently a kangaroo. Good to know what they sound like. So let's go and find our level seven. And even before we get there, we've got another aggressive one. I love that the dog barks at them. So just for the heck of it, with the seven mil, because they kind of hop in. That was interesting how he turned back around. They kind of hop in close and then find a way to try to, you know, get an angle to punch or kick at you. I wonder if that was a, a full on animation or if that just kind of happened that way, because that looked good. That is also the gray brown fur type. All silver so far. Right to the bottom of the lungs there. I knew that shot was a little bit too low, but obviously the 7 mil is going to get one down just fine. And thinking of potential weapons to carry, specifically with the idea in mind that kangaroos may attack, I don't think just a normal bolt action rifle is a bad idea, but something like the 308 or even a shotgun with buckshot, if you have like three, like we had attack, that might not be a terrible choice. This. I think looks like a little bit darker. He kind of flipped over as we shot him, but interesting the way that worked. That's a great round as well, but a gold this time. I didn't even look. Diamond is 492. Gold is 378. So as a level 7, kind of barely even a gold. I think it might be the same scoring as the Gators, if I'm not mistaken, but look at the claws. Like, the kicks that we got from those couple of roos that were aggressive, that would not feel particularly good. I don't know how long we'll stay in the Outback, probably a while based on how fun this is, but just in case we don't find anything better, we'll tax that so we can take a close look in the Trophy Lodge at the end of the video. I mean, they are literally everywhere. And I guess we've got Red Deer down here in the Outback. That one is pretty good. And Axis Deer. Look at that! That looked way different. Hang on. The Red Deer got a rework for sure, and I think that's either a Mythical or a level 7. So maybe we can get a crack at that one. And I think there may have been even more somewhere over in here. But we gotta go and look at that Axis Deer. Well, there's even more there, but those are 100% different than they were. Not that... Oh, there's a much better one. I guess that's only like a level 3. Not that a level 2 is the best example, but if we can get a shot at him, even if it's at like a neck shot... We could try to go 22250 for them. Now, they are a class 3, so having something like that, 243, 22250, somewhere in that caliber uh, range is necessary. Probably a brain shot or something, but that'll bring it down and not send the red deer running, though they definitely hurt it. And that's a mythical, so why don't we, just while we're standing here, try to make that shot too? And I think we have a couple of different models to take a look at. He should turn back now that he's... Can I calm back down? If we have to, we'll just send a 22 round down range. That'll get him to turn. And of course, he's got a perfect bodyguard. But even at 200 meters, they look significantly better as well. Slowing down a little bit. That's going to be a hard shot. 
Not too bad from our, our weapons so far, though the 7 mil is not a new one. I think that Axis Deer dropped, and he did. So let's take a look at these. To me, that looked entirely different than it used to. Not even just, like, new furs and stuff. The face shape, I thought, looked different. Really, really nice coloration, too. Like, before they were too almost simplistic in design. Like, now you see the dark kind of strip of fur down the back is a little bit lighter in color. As you go down, it continues to get lighter. But look at the face shape. That's the spotted fur type, which I think is basically the common. Really, really nice. And they don't have that, like, stung by a bee face anymore. That's a huge improvement. I can't wait to see the, the dark variation for them. Before that, we've got new red deer to take a look at. And like I said, even from here, you can really tell. I want to get to some other new species, but look at this guy. That is such a major improvement. I know the antlers are the same, but there's something about it with the, the models being better. Oh my goodness. It really helps that he was in that alert pose. It gives such a majestic look to this. The... Just the subtle changes in color in certain places. The face is the major one. But you see it back through, like, the... The shoulders, the back legs, the rump patch is different. It's all so much better. If that's what we're looking at with old species, some of these new ones we haven't seen yet, I can't wait to see the detail. The difference in whatever furs these are, like that is so much different than the last red deer. I think that was dark brown and maybe light brown. I really want to get to some of the new species, but I just can't help but notice these massive differences from anything that we've seen before. And I've started my way north, so hopefully we can run into hog deer, rooster deer, sandbar deer, stuff like that at some stage soon, but we have to look at that. And like I said, I can only imagine this is going to be the light brown fur type. That is just... It's a stunning difference. That is a light brown. I really love what they've done with them. I'm curious about the great ones. Like, I wonder if there's any difference at all for them. There is only one fur type, obviously, for great one red deer, and that is the fabled spotted. So, maybe there's hope for that. Got some more axis deer coming up through here. I mean, everything just feels so much more alive. Largely because it's been improved so much. And right on cue, our first fallow deer, not only are the, like, textures different, the fur textures, the models are. Which I guess we sorta knew, but it's so obvious on that doe. Like, they're much kind of beefier. I thought I heard a fallow buck, but maybe it was just the doe? We'll see if we can follow them. So there was a buck. Just a level 3, and I guess they spooked. I really want to see if we can make that shot. Now, we got to see the remodeled fallow just a little bit in the EW Great One stream. He's standing right there. At least I think he was. I guess we must have gotten him, but I want to get, like, an up-close look. And I promise the next thing we shoot will be a new species. We'll ignore everything else, but there's been so much already. That is a really nice-looking fallow deer. Dark fur type just completely different from what we're used to. I actually think the bucks, like the models themselves, are pretty similar. The does, though, no doubt. The, the shoulders and, like, the chest and neck are way, way beefier, but that's cool to see. I can't wait to see, like, gold or diamond antlers on these new furs. Man, that is everything that I would hoped a rooster deer would be, and it's not even a level 5. Like, that's a really good-looking four. I wonder, can we do the same thing with the 22 as we did earlier just to get him to turn around? That got his attention. So we should be able to get a good, clean broadside shot of him. Look at that. They look fantastic. As a class 6 animal, because they do go up to, I'm guessing that's going to be max weight, 172 kilo. He took that 7 mil round like a champ. He didn't go far. But that was kind of good to see something that didn't drop. I mean, from all the way back here, you see those really nice tines sticking up over that brush. That is a great looking deer. I think it was the two tones fur type. I picked up the disturbed veg on the way. Look at that. They are honestly everything I was hoping for and then some. And I can't wait to see what a diamond would be. That's a 133.93. 
the two tones is just fantastic. What a cool looking deer. Diamond is going to be 148.78, so they're going to get considerably bigger than that yet. I think we're going to tax that. That looks really, really nice. Look at the size of this crocodile track. 856 kilo minimum and up to 1100. I'm guessing like this type of area with all these mangroves seems like a good spot for them to be. I haven't seen any yet. There's been a couple of tracks, mostly females. Probably gonna slow it down just in case. I don't know what the new croc behavior is supposed to be like just yet, but I definitely don't want to overdo it. There are two sitting right there. They're huge looking. That's a six. And up to 856. And a five right next to him. So at least we kind of know what we're looking for. I think we're gonna keep tracking this one right now though. And of course, as we're doing this, We've got a flock of magpie geese flying over, and that front one, I'm guessing is kind of decent sized, up to three kilo, and we actually clipped it on that first shot, which is kind of ideal. If that croc is nearby, we didn't have to do too much shooting to potentially spook it. Now, in the Hunter Classic, I think it is three and a half kilo or something like that would be the max weight for magpie geese, so I'm thinking that one should be pretty decent. All of Oh, we're on the wrong track now, so good to know. Maybe it's similar to the American alligators, all of in, I think, dark brown. I didn't get a disturbed edge from the heavy one. That's, this might be it. That's all of, and a completely different one again. They're, they they got to be all over here. Just haven't had any too close. I think, yeah, those are the ones we already looked at. Now, just finding our goose was a little bit more involved than expected, so I've lost the track of the croc for now, but... One thing I'm noticing is we have a 3.17. They're scored differently. That sounded like several crocs really close to us. So diamond is 3.85. I think they're the same scoring then as gray lags. But the weights are closer to tundra binkies. That's really interesting. Really cool, almost like prehistoric looking birds though. I think again, one of these things that we can tax and put in the lodge just to take a closer look at. I don't know what direction that was. Probably right over there. I can't see anything yet, but oh, there's one right there. That's a seven and still not the right estimate, but maybe we can try that. I don't even know if we can get a vital hit though. Oh, and I don't know if that's the same one, but we get to see an aggressive saltwater croc. So much like with the ruse, I'm going to give him a minute and kind of see what he does. I hope it's not like a one-shot kill kind of thing, but <sighs> not too much damage. Let's see if we can get like a, a brain shot at him or something. Probably through the spinal cord, that's gonna more or less insta-kill him. I just got back on the track. Look at the detail in those guys. Really, really cool looking eyes as well. I wish they would do more damage. I hope that's something that can be kind of adjusted. Did we only hit him once? No, we hit him twice. We hit him in the flesh the first time. This new harvest screen is going to take a little bit of getting used to. Second shot, through the neck and into the vertebrae and didn't get the spinal cord. So it was the neck that kind of got us the, the vital hit there. Those guys are really cool. We obviously are on the track of a heavier one, so we won't worry about taxing that. Got to figure out where that was. And hopefully the shots didn't spook him. Man, he's a mythical... Or at least that one is. I'm not 100% sure that's the one that we're tracking. At a distance like that, they just look massive. I want to know what's beside him. I guess they're going to be similar to the gate. Oh, there's two max weight ones there. A 7 and an 8, but much like alligators, they are a little bit tough to spot being so low to the ground like that. Got a 5 back in there as well. It seems like there's just little areas where a bunch of them will kind of convene. And this is... It's tough to hunt it because you can't see that well with all the mangrove roots and stuff. Let's see. So one thing I was curious about, they won't just go aggressive after being hit. I don't know if this water's deep enough for them to disappear to or if they can even do that. He's going down. Let's see what happens. Worst case, if we lose him, we know not to do that on a nine. And there you go. Just popped right back up to the surface and floating over. Now, this isn't particularly deep water. And that was something I had noticed as we went along tracking. It's possible the 7 is the one that we had. I just realized that's not the one that we have the track of, but 
there's not a lot of areas where if they will just die at the bottom of the water and drown and never float back, there's not a lot of, a lot of areas they could actually get to where the water's deep enough for that, but this guy is a 903 score, 1,015 per diamond, so you need like a 2,000 pound croc to make diamond. That's going to be insane. We'll do it again. We'll tax this again to take a look in the trophy lodge at the end. Not too bad. I want to go and visit some of the other new species, but I could stay here and do a whole video just in this area chasing these guys. Look at the... Hang on. I changed my mind. I want to shoot a female. That looks so different. Nice. Almost never can I land a heart shot on a gator. First time attempting it on a croc? No big deal. And by the way, the other one that was there apparently is going to go aggressive. So I want to see how difficult is it to like get that vital hit when they're charging? That wasn't too bad. Now this I could totally see escaping into the into the depths. So that's a level one. It's not going to hurt if we kind of ruin that metal. I want to see what we did with this because to me this looked oh, it's a gray. So that is going to be a bit of a, a different I don't even know what to call that. Not fur or plumage type. Variation, I guess? Not too bad, right through the heart. Kind of just intuitively as well. I'll have to try that again in the future, but then this other one, I wouldn't say this is olive. It's dark brown, so there's more variants for these. Everything thus far has just exceeded expectations, whether it's the model reworks, whether it's the amount of variation and stuff, the one look we got at Arusa Deer was absolutely fantastic, and there's far more to see, so we're gonna keep moving. I do want to go and look at some Bantang a little bit, which were, when we did the Untamed Species video, primarily up in this area, that is a really pale looking fallow deer. We're being chased by a croc too, so we need to kind of hurry that shot up to, to see what that is. Oh, interesting. Maybe that was just timing. Meanwhile, Sir 12 is getting harassed by it, but one shot and it just turned and fled. So we noticed that with the ones that we've shot so far, when we hit them, they do just kind of take off. But I wonder if a gunshot in general will spook them, because that wouldn't be a terrible thing to be able to get them to end up, you know, turning around. I don't know what fur type this might be, but pretty cool looking. Almost... Manil-like. Oh, it's a white. That is really cool. Double lunged it there at 292 meters, kind of rushed with that croc. And you know what? As I'm looking at this, I do think the males have a little bit of a, a buff in like the shoulders and, and chest and neck area too. The face looks maybe a, a touch shorter. I don't know. That is cool though. I don't know if that's like a rare, uncommon... Not that it matters, early access stuff we won't keep, but that's going in the lodge for closer inspection later. And finally, we get a look at a sandbar deer. That's interesting. They're listed just as sandbar. I don't know if that's like a, a local thing in Australia, if there's, if there's a reason they're not listed as sandbar deer. I want to see if we can get a broadside fleeing shot. I prefer if he would just stand still, but whatever we got to go for... He's actually going to slow down out there. So lots of making use of the 22 strat today. Probably in part due to the fact that we don't really know where to look yet. So we're going to spook things a little bit more naturally. But let's see. If he stands right in there. He kind of stepped right into that hard shot. But we will take it. I'm guessing max weight for them is going to be somewhere in the area of 400 kilo. Just based on that. Maybe a little bit higher. So as a class 6. I wouldn't mind seeing them be class 7, but that's not too bad. What is that? Is that a different fur type for Fallow again? It is completely different than anything I've ever seen, so we're just gonna take that shot too. We're just never gonna stop shooting the new and improved base game animals, I guess, but they all look so good. Weirdly enough, I might be more excited about the Fallow Deer, but our first sandbar, light brown fur type for that, very similar looking deer to Rusa deer. I don't know if they are related. As far as I know, Sambar deer are kind of like a bigger version of a Rusa deer, but just a 106 silver, 
diamond for them is 166. So they'll get way bigger. That was something I've talked about on streams lately. I really want to know how big the sandbars will get, because in the screenshot on Steam, the couple of sandbar deer that are standing there aren't very big, so good to know they should be a good bit bigger than that. What is this? That's no melanistic. It's gotta be some other fur? Chocolate. That is different too though, hold on. Gold that was 187.81, and diamond I think... It may have went down just a touch. I think it was 251 or something. So that'll be kind of good. That not basically every decent fallow makes gold. That is a cool looking fallow deer though. I love that they're not only improving the existing furs, but adding some new ones that I think really play right into the realism part. I mean, fallow deer in real life are known for having all sorts of variations and they've certainly added a few here. And finally, it's all come full circle, we finally get to take a look at the Bantang, and for a number of reasons, these will remain a favorite for me. Obviously getting to do the Untamed Species video for Expanse Worlds was really, really cool. We get to see an aggressive one here, but this was actually a little behind the scenes from making that video. I, shot, I tried to shoot a bunch of Bantang to get them to go aggressive, and I kept on hitting the massive lungs they have. That was the reason I took the shot at the angle I did, kind of in through the spine. They are really cool to see. Like, this aggressive behavior is quite cool. And I guess had I used the 7 mil, it wouldn't have been too bad. But even still, he's going to end up dropping before we quite get to him. And we're going to get to see our first one of the hunts. I don't know what fur type this is. I think it's maybe like a lighter brown variation. But they are just absolutely stunning animals. And we know there's a lot of variety with them even from just the Hunter Classic, but I can't wait to see different variations and particularly the different rares. Mocha? Man, I didn't pay too much attention to fur types and stuff when I made the Untamed Species video, but I sure don't remember that. So just in case, we'll tax it. It's a decent one, like a, a gold? 123, diamond is 137. Just in case, we will keep that, but now we gotta try to shoot some more and check fur types. I mean, I kinda think that's the same thing. So maybe it is just a common variation with a, a name that we don't get to see too much in the Hunter Call of the Wild, so if we can, get a quick shot in there, that should bring him down eventually. Just maybe give us a chance to confirm if what we shot was significantly special or not. But even in trying to check that out, you can see they're very much like the bison, more so a bison than a buffalo. They trot rather slowly. You can almost keep up with them if you want to. I prefer to hunt them without just running after them. But in this case, try to see what is going on fur type wise. Well, that's a dark brown. So now I don't know. Even that was a gold though. At 110.22. So just barely. But you see the size of their lungs. There's a huge target that presents. So I don't think they're going to be too difficult to make the shot on when it comes to trying to get a diamond or a rare, even on the run. I think because, as I just mentioned, they travel rather slowly, you could just kind of run alongside herds and shoot them that way, and because they have such a massive target to aim for in those huge lungs, I think that would be pretty effective. Finally, one of the last two new species we haven't seen today, and it is the stubble quail. I want to show you guys the estimates on these tracks, but first of all, we need to try to get one or two. So, that one we saw was kind of running our way, so hopefully the entire flock will kind of flush up over us here. And man, did they ever just disappear. So I don't even know males or females which ones we want to go for. We'll just try to get as many as we can. There was a double. And we got the last one there. I think it was just the four. So actually, before we pick any up, let me turn around and find a track real quick. Any of these will do. This is a stubble quail track. Look at the estimate. 0.10 to 0.11 kilo. The weight range is literally 0.01 kilogram. So these things weigh like four ounces or about a tenth of a kilo, which is kind of insane how small they are. By far the smallest animal in the game, about half the size of a bobwhite quail, but diamond is 238 for them. I think that's the same scoring as the bobwhite quail. It's changed a little bit with them to where the, the males make diamond now. I don't even know if there was a male in here. This one scores 160 as a silver female. 
got a 146 bronze at 0.12. That's interesting. Because I thought it weighed more than the last one. It may not have. The last one then is another gray plumage type 149. These little guys are going to be really interesting. And I'm just guessing because of the way the scoring is, probably the males will be the ones that make diamond, similar to the bobwhite quail, but I wonder what kind of, you know, potential multi-mounts and stuff could happen with them. With them being so little, you can almost do two or three in a multi-mount on those small little round platforms. And last but not least, I don't even need to spot them to recognize that, our hog deer. 43 to 50 kilo, a level three. So I wonder how big they're gonna get. They are class three, so gonna be perfect for the 22250 yet again. And for whatever reason, he just kind of stopped right there, but he's 200 meters out. We'll try to scoot in a little bit closer. What I'd love to do actually is try to hard shot him. I actually don't know what the penetration of this ammo looks like. It's not like a roadier warning call. It's 25 penetration, which isn't bad. Oh, there's another one. A level four right there. And they're drinking right now. What time do they drink? 1300 to 1700. So that's not a bad drink time. This is the only animal other than red deer that we've seen drinking. There's actually a number of them around here. Another level four, a whole bunch of, I, I don't know, stags or bucks. I'm not sure what the proper term is, but I guess this is a good lake for them. And we might as well go for the one with the highest estimate. It's almost 200 meters out, but I think from what we've seen in the 22250, it should be able to accomplish that. It's just a matter of what the bullet drop looks like. So it's going to favor a little bit high just in case. And we'll see if that ends up bringing it down. If it doesn't, it probably won't be lethal, but it's dropping. So that should be a vital hit. And you can see a low bleed rate for that. So not great for a class three animal, but kind of similar to feral goats. They actually have the same weight estimates. They are pretty good size for a class three. Let's see what this guy is though. A 83 scoring silver. As a level four, man, just missed out on gold, but diamond is 108. They should end up getting pretty decent size and only tracked them 250 meters, so not terrible. Man, that barely got the lung though. That is not something I would do a whole lot is trying to get frontal, like vital hits with the 22250, at least on hog deer. But I think we'll tax him too. And that is now all eight of the new species here on the Emerald Coast. We've gotten to take a look at every single one of them. And I think on that note, we'll go back to the Trophy Lodge, try to do some kind of setup where we can take a peek at everything that we've taxed and see how they look up close. And in the interest of not making this video even longer than it has to be, I've gone ahead and set up one of the multi-mounts over here in the back right corner. And we might as well start with that. So it's called Lucky Crocodile. I'll go into the multi-mount thing here. We need a male croc and a male magpie goose, which luckily we harvested today. And there's a whole bunch of different poses, but this one is the one I want to talk about for just a second. This is where the ability to possibly customize the terrain of these platforms would really come into play. Because if we could do water instead of what is just for hunger savanna, like sand to vegetation, this mount would be a hundred times better. But we'll kind of quickly go through a bunch of the poses. I like this one. It's pretty good, and then this one's not too bad either, but lots of different options, similar even to some of the non-multi-mount things for gators. And I'm going to throw a gator on the opposite side, just to compare sizes, because I think with that, we'll be able to do it. But the white fallow deer, I think this is just a stunning fur type. Imagine a diamond with this. And I mean, we know great one fallow deer are coming to the game. We have a great one fallow deer grind upcoming. Maybe the dream of getting a diamond with the white fur type will become a reality. Got our Mocha Bantang. I'll be really intrigued to see over the next couple of days and maybe into release if we see more of those or if that's some sort of rare because like I said, I don't remember seeing that. Got our little hog deer here. And then of course the Eastern Gray Kangaroo. Now, this is so clearly the featured species of this map. There's so many poses and that's just for like a solo route. I say that because the other multi-mount is actually for kangaroos as well, which I believe I predicted on a couple of streams. Not that it was difficult to predict, but it's going to be called Rumble to Grey Kangaroos Boxing. Unfortunately, we haven't killed two, so we can't set it up just yet, but we'll do that sometime down the road, maybe in the next video, and take a look at that. And I can only imagine there's going to be even more poses. And finally, what I think is the highlight kill of this hunt, our Rusadir. 
a 133 scoring gold, two tones fur type. If this was the diamond rack, I'd be okay with it, but they're gonna get even bigger than this, even more impressive, and I just love the models. Like, they really knock it out of the park with these Rooster Deer models. I think they look just perfect, and it's gonna be really, really exciting to see what kind of rares, you know, what kind of variations in the true racks and stuff come from this, and it won't be long with release on the 20th till we get to see that. So let's throw a cater here. Now, the only thing I have is a piebald, but they're effectively in the exact same pose. I think they may have used the same pose for the Crocs, but just, you know, obviously for the multi-mount. If we step all the way back here, look how much bigger that crocodile is. There is a gigantic difference. It's nearly twice as big, which is just nuts. I can't wait to see, you know, what kind of rares and stuff there are for them too. Diamond we know was over 1,000, so we're going to need some really heavy crocs to get up to that diamond mark, but that will have to be saved for the future because that is finally going to do it for our first look at the Emerald Coast here on Australia. I am blown away by this update. Everything, whether it's the red deer furs, the fallow furs, the axis deer are incredible, all the new species. This map and this update as a whole look really, really good, and I can't wait to see what else it has to offer. And we'll be coming back here very shortly to take another look and continue exploring. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.